This is The Warrior's Journey, a podcast designed to equip, inspire, and bridge the gap between military members, veterans, their families, and our communities. The Warrior's Journey is an interactive online community where warriors and their families can find resources and encouragement to navigate the unique challenges they face and presents the message of faith as the path to finding wholeness in everyday life. For questions, resources, and to find ways to get involved, visit thewarriorsjourney.org. Hey everybody, this is Kevin Weaver. Welcome back to the Warrior's Journey podcast. And uh, this is a this is kind of a neat podcast because it's first time in studio, and uh, for all of those who are listening on the audio side, we're also for the very first time with a very special guest. Uh, we are moving to not just audio, but uh, transitioning now to also video on our YouTube channel and uh, our other uh, social media platforms. So uh, let me just give a very big warm welcome to our guest, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Sullivan, or our Stuart Sullivan. Uh, or better known as uh, Scar, call sign Scar, which uh, I'll ask you about that here in a little bit because that's a really cool story. So welcome, Scar. Man, good to have you. Uh, thanks for having me. You know, uh, Kevin and I have known each other for a very long time working together. Um, you finally got me in here, so congratulations. <laughs> um, uh, looking forward to it. So thanks for having me. Bud. And you, did, you didn't do it kicking and screaming too bad. It wasn't It wasn't too hard. So <laughs> yeah, we got a little uh, on our, our video wall here. We got a little oh, bit of a, a cool thing here. Um, retired Air Force. Now, not retired very long. Talk That's about right. talk about, uh, talk about your military experience and tell us a little bit about who you are. Um, and in fact, I'll just mention this and I won't give it away. First time I ever met Scar was via telephone. I get this call and it says, "Hey, I'm such and such from the U.S. Air Force," and because I don't want to, I don't want to tell exact because he did. He gave his title, told me who he was, told me he was a pilot, what he flew, and uh, Congresswoman Vicky Hartzler told me to call you because she said that uh, you know we should be working together. And I'm like, "Wait a minute, you're a what pilot?" <laughs> and uh, and I'll I'll stop there because I'll let you tell the rest of the story and talk about what you did in the Air Force, and I think everybody will go, "Whoa, that's pretty cool." I appreciate that. I'll start a little bit back in 1995. I enlisted in the Navy. I had no idea what I wanted to do in life. So went ahead and enlisted in the Navy, did four years uh, on board two different aircraft carriers, four de- uh, two different deployments, spent a year, three months, and 18 days at sea. And I learned uh, after that four years exactly what I did not want to do in life. Still had no idea what I wanted to do. <laughs> but you knew you didn't want to be on a board aircraft carriers and live no, as a Navy I was done. Guy. To be quite honest, I was done with the military. Wow. And so... Uh, my what, did, what did you do when you were in the Navy? Aviation electrician's mate, petty officer third class. So I worked on the F-18. Wow, that's cool. Yes. Specifically, like, fixing what? On, on... Uh, they, they call it a plane captain and then working into the uh, uh, the electrical portion. So anything, okay. electricity, which is basically the old airplane. A whole uh, lot more complex than most of our, our listeners probably understand. So it's... Yeah. <laughs> And so then I uh, got out, went to school, and I was going to the University of Missouri in Columbia. And uh, two years into my education is when September 11th happened. Mm. About a month later, my uh, wife and I were laying in bed. She rolls over and she said, uh, hey, have you, maybe you should go back into the military. And uh, I rolled over and I said, maybe I should. And at that moment, mm. we didn't realize this was a, a really a God thing. I said, okay, if we're going to do this, it's going to have to be a career because we had no intentions on doing the military. Mm-hmm. Did ROTC for two years, did very well, uh, and then went to, uh, got picked up for a pilot slot. So I went to the Euro-NATO Joint Jet Pilot Training down in Wichita Falls. So I got to train in, with the uh, Italians and Germans and Spaniards and all other kinds of our, our NATO countries. And I uh, was then selected to stay there as a first assignment instructor pilot, and they call them FAPES. Uh, where I flew the T-38 and learned how. To, so so imagine going to pilot training, you'd never flown an airplane, and now you're being taught by a guy who just graduated, <laughs> who just also learned how to fly an airplane. Well, that was me. The, so. What's crazy to me about this story is, too, because I, I know a lot of Air Force pilot friends and a lot of folks that have gone, even academy grads, to get, an, to get a pilot slot is no small feat in the Air Force. I mean, so for you to to do that out of ROTC, I mean, there's a series of miracles, it sounds like, took place to get you to that point, which is so cool. 
a, probably a dynamic part of the story that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily understand. Is that is that a fair statement? I'm not trying to over dramatize, but it seems like just for you to be able to have access to be a pilot is pretty cool with your story. Uh, it's extremely tough to get a pilot slot, even more so to get into NJEP because mm-hmm. uh, NJEP is short for that Euronado Joint Jet Pilot Training. It's still there today because if you go to NJEP, then you know basically you're going to get a fighter or a bomber. And that's what everyone wants. Uh, who doesn't want to be a fighter pilot, right? Right, right. Uh, <laughs> and so, and, and to summarize what you just said, I didn't realize until uh, you know years later that really God has it, had His hand in this whole thing. It was uh, pretty amazing. Awesome. So after I uh, stay at uh, Wichita Falls, teaching people how to fly airplanes, uh, keeping myself from dying, uh, while, while you have a student trying to slam you into other airplanes, uh, <laughs> I. Um, Came up to Whiteman Air Force Base, did an interview, and did uh, some. Got in the simulator for the first time. Tried to air refuel for the first time. Trying to fly a big airplane for the first time. I have no clue what I'm doing, and, and they're grading me. I completely bomb it. Um, no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> Uh, so I, did, I thought kind of my chances were over. But in 2008 is when we moved to Whiteman Air Force Base in Missouri. Uh, started flying the B2s, and uh, also the T38 is there as well and uh, progressed quickly through the ranks and was uh, eventually went to U.S. Air Force Weapons School. I like to, a lot of people don't know what that is. They know what Top Gun is. Top Gun's the Navy Weapons School. They're about nine weeks long. The Air Force Weapons School is five and a half months long. That's crazy. Some of them say, well, it takes you that long to figure it out, but you know, <laughs> and so. Um, and you and you finished Top of your class in that. Uh, I did well in that. And then yeah, he's modest. He finished top of his class, I know, because <laughs> you ended up being, being an instructor there. Then I went back to be an instructor there. Yeah, and I was actually a- in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, teaching weapons school. And uh, they pulled me back early from being out there. And I was like, why am I going back home? This was in January of 2017. Mm-hmm. So they bring me back early. Had I no no idea that uh, some special forces guys called up uh, the Pen- in the Pentagon, gave us a call, and they said that we've been watching these people over in Libya for quite some time. Um, they're getting ready to graduate terrorist training boot camp, and they all need to go away. There's somewhere between mm-hmm. fifty and two hundred. What what was the and year on this? What year was twenty seventeen? Seventeen. Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. And so uh, they brought me back early as one of the high, highest experienced guys. There had we we had been doing some training, which we just call dynamic targeting. And um, during this training, only the weapons school people actually were qualified to do what we were doing because we had practiced this in secret for many many years, mm. for just in case that one time. But we all know that one time is never going to happen until it does. Mm-hmm. And so uh, that's what they did. That's why they brought me back. We actually were using B twos. Nuclear hardened, two point two billion dollars stealth airplane, to use five hundred pounds to uh, bombs to target people. Wow. Like no one knows, you don't do that. Mm-hmm. And and I became really good at it. And so they brought me back. And January seventeenth of twenty seventeen, it was Operation Odyssey Lightning, and we did a thirty three hour combat mission. There was two that went over the target area, and. We were supposed to be on station for four hours. However, we did a single pass with two B-2s, and within about less than 20 minutes later, they just said, good job, you're cleared off RTB, which means return to base. Right. And so we were thinking, well, we can't return to base. All of our tankers, they won't, we're four hours ahead. You know, This is not good to send us home at that time, You know, three and a half hours early. Because logistically, you're saying the tankers weren't prepared to get you back home. Actually, they were asleep. They were in crew rest. Oh, and wow. what crew rest means is you can't break crew rest. Right. So these guys needed 12 hours off, you know, before they, because mm-hmm. they took us there. And mm-hmm. then they took, a, you know, a nap. And then they were supposed to fly back, uh, take us back home. Uh, they actually broke their crew rest and they said, we don't care. You got to do what we got to do to get these B2s back home. You know, and, and so, if I'm probably the crew, I'm thinking, yeah, these guys uh, that are flying the, the bombers aren't getting any rest because <laughs> you were awake for how long? Over 40 hours. That's insane. Yeah. And, of course, that's not normal. But I, I would say that you're breaking a, some some major protocol or normal protocol, safety protocols to make that happen too, right? 
Well, they have flight surgeons uh, that give you some special medicines that, that <laughs> help you stay awake. To do, to do this? <laughs> uh, <can> you, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. And so the, the summary of that one is we the, out of two B-2s, we dropped uh, 85 500-pound bombs, and there was uh, 84 terrorists that were dead. They had wow. um, nine MQ-9s with four Hellfire missiles each, um, just in case there was any squirters. Uh, potentially, and my could you, target. Could you, could you define what that means? Ah, squirters. Uh, yes, yeah, squirters are whenever you bomb something, and there are survivors that take off running because they don't want to get hit again, and so they kind of disperse. So Clay, Clay, Clay's over here, our sound engineer, as an army guy. Did you know what that meant? A little something different. I, I knew what it was, but I thought maybe he might need an education on that one. So, okay, sorry, Clay. <laughs> uh, and probably they're peeing at their pants at the same time. Oh, so no maybe kidding, that's yeah. why I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, but yes, and so we'd, we'd had to use uh, about four, uh, five of their hellfires to take care of uh, five of the squirters. But wow. um, and I know we we make you know not to make light of this. I mean, we were talking about taking human life, and so you know that that's a very very sober mm. kind of thing, and. Um, I know we we like to make light, and if you're not military, military guys understand this because they they know that you've got to do what you got to do to cope with the kind of trauma that this thing can potentially bring as a as a, a person involved with kinetic engagements, combat of any kind, and uh, and I know that you guys we the Air Force takes it on the chin a lot. Oh, you guys, your chair force, you guys are up in the sky. You're not really getting dirty. It's all blah 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 blah. It's easy easy peasy. Yeah, not so much. I mean, I. You do. You deal with the same types of things. Maybe it's a different format. So, would you be willing? And I don't, you know, because we didn't. Our preparation for I know our podcast today was, hey, let's just have a conversation, and see what happens, yeah, right? So, bring it, bring it. Okay, so, <laughs> so you know, I think it would really help our listeners because I know a lot of a lot of folks who listen are, have have been or are currently working through, or maybe realizing that there's levels of invisible wounds or trauma that they are needing to work through. The military is not the most conducive place to to do that in. I mean, we're not trained to be open and vulnerable about those kinds of things mm-hmm. where it's more about mission ready. You better get your stuff squared away, get your act together, right, and and make sure you're doing a, the job you need to do. So talk about a little bit, you know, how did that affect you? How did it affect you emotionally, spiritually, um, even physically? I mean, what, what were some of the things you had to work through as it related to that mission? Uh, well, I appreciate that. Those some things in life that are just kind of seared in your brain. And when you're getting ready to take another human's life, especially as a Christian, um, you go through a dilemma. And so I remember very vividly flying over the Mediterranean as uh, I had finished creating a bunch of targets, and each one of those targets was uh, a body. So we were finished after about two and a half hours of just plugging in coordinates, and uh, we were done, and it was about two or three hours until we were actually going to be on station. So I just hopped out in the back, and as I was just sitting there, I really felt the Lord saying, are you all in? I was like, yeah, I'm all in. And then I felt him say, are you sure? And so for any of those people who are you know, strong believers, whenever the Lord says, are you sure, you need to pause. <laughs> sure. And uh, so often he brings scripture to memory. And at that point, I, I really remember the scripture verse that says, you have heard from old to love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you to love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you. Mm-hmm. So it was the first time to actually apply that, to be like, wait a minute, I'm getting ready to kill these guys, and I'm supposed to pray for my enemies and, and love them? This is not right. Well, how do I do this? They don't teach you that. Here I am as a warrior. All I know how to do is, uh, like, here I'm on my mission. I've been training for this years and years. Why am I not excited? Mm. And it was because there was another uh, uncle down there. There was a father that was down there. They are fighting for what they believe in, just as I was fighting for what I believe in. So when you're with that dilemma, you're like, what do you do? Um, I don't know a chaplain that could actually give you that answer. So Hmm. I just prayed, and I said, okay, Lord, if there's a Saul down there that can be a Paul, save him. Save him now. Mm -hmm. If there's a Saul that can be a Paul, then let me mess up Mm -hmm. because you're bigger than all of this. Mm -hmm. Let me put in the wrong coordinates. Let the GPS tail fin not work. Let the GPS constellation not work. All the batteries, all the seven miracles that need to happen just in order to (laughs) drop a bomb on target. Mm -hmm. And so I just said, 
Um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna intentionally put my switch down. I'm not gonna intentionally uh, do anything wrong because I don't know what your will is, but I know you have me here for a reason. And even though I don't know what it is, I'm just going to trust you. And, uh, and I'm going to do my job as you yeah, do him, my job you know, and, and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. Yep. So um, absolutely. And so, cause on the other side of the coin, sorry to interrupt but yeah. on the other side of the coin, it's also like, Hey, and God, and you, you have life in your hands ultimately. Cause I think that's what you were saying. I know that you have the power of life and death. It's although I'm an instrument, right? It, 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 there's a there's a heavy weight that goes with it, but I think with God guiding you and giving that over to the Lord too, it's also hey and God and you know who needs to not be here anymore too. Yeah, and I think that's an unfortunate thing we don't talk about. There is such a thing as evil that lives in the world, and uh, you know we've talked with a lot of uh, even guys on the ground. You know whether they're Army, Marine Corps, and I think the guys that seem to be most healthy are the ones that realize hey we feel like we were instruments you know, given talent by God to to take out folks that were beyond God's ability to reach. or And we can get in all kinds of crazy theological mm-hmm. discussions, which we probably shouldn't do here. But, <laughs> you know, but the idea that, hey, to reconcile that, that moral injury aspect of my life, you know, we have to trust. We have to trust something beyond ourselves in all this because we can't make heads or tails of it on our own. Yeah, I appreciate that. And, and so I think uh, so often— you, you can start picking apart these stories about, well, you know, this is true and this is right. And I say, there's a difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. Mm-hmm. You can know all these things. You can know all these truths, but uh, individual experiences for, uh, you know, varies from person to person. Mm-hmm. So one person, yeah, they may be fine for the whole life and the other person might do the exact same thing and they're just destroyed inside yeah. and they don't know how to get it fixed. And so that's why I appreciate what you guys are doing by let's seek the invisible wounds, which no one can see. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys are doing a great job at that and because uh, when I was done, uh, we landed and we had to hurry up and do a debrief. And that debrief was a whole bunch of people cheering and uh, clapping whenever we're watching bodies explode, you know, in high definition. And you're like, huh, that was me. Mm. Okay, now it's time for me to go home. And uh, no kidding, uh, I couldn't go to sleep. So what did I do? I went with my wife and my kids and I took them to swim practice, right? Like, okay, here we go. Wow. It's just another day. Wow. And so I, my processing wasn't just, you know, oh, I know that God used me as an instrument of death. It was when it really hit the heart of, man, God loves them too, right? Yeah. And so uh, um, the best thing I did was I got to find someone else out there who has done this or can help me walk through this because I really don't know how to feel right now. Yeah, process. So, you needed a place where you could trust someone to just process what you did, what you just experienced. Yeah, absolutely. Someone yeah. who's not going to be judgmental to be like, "Hey, so you good. guys are doing close air support, seven, you know, seven miles in the sky, uh, seven miles away, and you're taking forever. That's not close air support." And right. you know, we're here on the ground, and it's again, it's just individualistic, and so yeah. that's yeah. the key. There's no uh, cookie cutter approach to helping someone. Yeah, and that particular mission became pretty, uh, pretty. Famous. I mean, it was a it was a point in contact where I know you you ended up going to Washington. You had some recognition. You had senators and congressional people that were like, "Man, great job!" You yeah. know, awarded. You know, given some yeah. some certain awards. And I mean, all that. It, all that how, pomp and circumstance yeah, is just crazy. How, and, how did that go? I mean, I mean, what was that? <laughs> what was that like? You know, well, that was the that was the debut that uh, we were showing the world that the B two bomber does close air support and yeah. that we actually target people. Got it. On the way home, I was like, okay, maybe this have never happened, and it never, you know, we're not going to talk about it. But then, yeah, now they're introducing me, carrying us, <laughs> showing us around, four star generals, uh, and as you mentioned uh, uh, previous to us. Uh, Getting started here, I uh, went to Washington, D.C., and I'm talking in front of uh, Air Force Global Strike Command Caucus and meet this lady uh, named Vicki Hartzler, kind of told my story during that caucus, and she gets right up in my face, and she basically said, I'm all in, too. Yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> okay, so you need to meet Kevin. Well, who's yeah. Kevin? Yeah. And here we are many years <laughs> later. Huh? So going back to my original story, so <laughs> I get this call right from this guy I've never talked to before. He's like, hey, I'm, you know, I'm uh, Stuart Sullivan, Lieutenant Colonel, you know, uh, squadron commander for, you know, B2. And I'm like, he had me at like squadron commander for B2. And I'm like, he, everything else he said was, what is this guy calling me? 
why is this guy calling me? You know, who's this rock star? You know, I, I had an instant bromance. I'll just, you know, I'll just have to say, you know, it's like, wow, this is pretty cool. So it's like, tell me about that again. Who are you? Why are you calling me? So that was the beginning. So I think I kind of settled into something a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, engaging that was a little bit more normal. So hopefully it didn't seem too weird. You're good. <laughs> okay, good. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, buddy. Because, you know, there's a, there is a high level of respect. I, being in the Air Force, even though I worked on the security forces side and, you know, I didn't, I rubbed shoulders a lot with pilots. Uh, you know, there was a it, it, there was a day that I I actually thought about you know being a pilot back in high school and all that kind of stuff and and um, you know which is it, it, there's a lot. I mean, you you start looking into what it takes to, to to get to that place and it's a it's a lot. You know, and so there's a, a I think I have a clear empathetical respect. You know, for what you and all the guys that do what you do. Uh, what you have to go through to make it happen. So thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice and your willingness to put yourself in that position. Um, and I think because for most Air Force people, you know, we I think most Air Force personnel don't really find themselves in those type of combatant type of situations unless you are a pilot and or security forces. And, you know, and even mm. compared to the Army and compared to the Marine Corps uh, or other naval forces that are a little bit more designed for that, you know, it's just limited. So so it doesn't make the Air Force less important, but I think you understand what I'm saying. And I think our listeners will appreciate that too. Hey, it, being in the Air Force does matter. It, it, is, the, it is the military. <laughs> it is the military. Yeah. And, um, you know, some of the things to, to consider with the B-2, it's the only aircraft that can carry the massive ordnance penetrator, right? So it has mm-hmm. um, the only one, the 30,000 pound bombs that are specific for uh, some targets and also, it can carry 16 of the world's um, largest yield nuclear weapon. And so they, we do a lot of training with that as well. So there is a lot of responsibility that goes along with it. There's a lot of training. And what I guess I'm trying to say is once you become and invest so much of that, it is your life. You yeah. are. That is your new identity. You just yeah. didn't know it. Yeah, that's a big yep. deal. That's a huge deal. So let's transition if we can a little bit because I know that now, post Air Force recently, uh, it's been just a, almost a year, over a year, a little September. over a year. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Doesn't that's crazy. It just time just flies. I remember being at your your ceremony, which was pretty cool. Um, didn't seem like it was that long ago, <laughs> but uh, a lot's happened since then. And uh, talk about how faith has interacted and interjected into this new identity, this new life, and uh, and all in ministries, and because uh, it's pretty cool. And we've had the privilege of being able to come alongside and. And um, you know we, what we've what we've contributed has been very small, but it's it's been fun to watch you know this thing grow, and it's just the beginning. So talk about all in. Well, I appreciate that. And uh, so it initially started in 2016. I actually had some hurts, habits, and hangups that were really deep in my heart that no one knew about. A lot of secrets, mm-hmm. and so I wrote two words on a piece of paper and I nailed it up the cross. Uh, nailed it onto this physically, nailed it up to a cross. And I said, God, I'm done trying to please you. I'm just going to trust you. Mm-hmm. And so that's when I really said, all right, I'm going to trust you with everything. And then he said, okay, now you got to go share a secret from your wife that you hid from her for 20 years and that you've hidden from everyone else for 28 years. And I'm thinking, nope, <laughs> no way. <laughs> and I was just, are you all in or not? So when you surrender the Lord and you're saying, I'm all in, you have literally said, all right, I'm done with my way of doing things. Your ways are better, so I'm mm-hmm. all in. Mm-hmm. And then he said, I want you to start a nonprofit on biblical manhood. I was like, nope, not going to do that. I fly B-2s. <laughs> Let me tell you, God, who I am. And he uh, responded with, I'm God, you're not. Yeah. And so I said, all right. So we started all the ministries in 2017. Was it kind of like, dang it? <laughs> or was it like, okay, I'm, I mean, when you say, all right, I'll do it, was, was that decision to say yes because it is a journey, right? Was it easy or was it hard? I mean, honestly. Um, I think the best way to answer that, it was fun. Okay. Because what happened was I knew the Bible to be true. I was born and raised in church, went to a Christian school. I mean, I was saved and everything was good. But when I said I'm all in, my head knowledge started converting to heart knowledge, and I started experiencing God for the first time. That's awesome. Fair and enough. Then I was like, what is happening? And I said, God, if I'm going to do all the ministries, you're going to have to do it because I don't know what I'm doing. And that's when I was able to see that he was just lining everything up. And now I've learned there's no such thing as coincidence. 
if you believe in God and you believe in coincidence at the same time, that God's not big enough. Yeah. You might want to think maybe you are. And so, so you're one of those guys that believes that God is in control of all things. <laughs> you're one of those guys. Oh yeah, yeah okay. I'm kind of one of those freaks. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, no, that's awesome. <laughs> that's and so awesome. Uh, what we do, uh, one of the things that we do with All In Ministries, uh, the title is All In because either all in or all out, nowhere in the middle. I was lukewarm, lukewarm for you know 28 years. Yeah. And uh, when you go all in, uh, we we actually take men on a weekend away. A lot of churches call them men's retreats. Come on, men don't retreat, we charge. So it's a men's charge. And so we take guys away uh, into a, a secret hiding place, not really, and just, <laughs> a, you know, any podunk place in Missouri and out in the middle of the woods, and uh, there's lots of cabins and everything. I'm kind of playing it up a little. But uh, during that time, you get to experience a lot of guys sharing their testimony and just being real and being raw. And you can just see the healing happening through the, the word of the testimony. Yeah. And then we'll have some uh, teachings as well on many different topics where every man can relate. So we just have normal, average people who've been changed um, by Christ. And then you, you start looking at other people a little differently. Wow, if that person can overcome, then, then mm. maybe I could. Yeah, it's so good. And then it's like, well, how do you do it? By brotherhood, specifically. There's other people that have been there or worse, and they're there to help you. You just have to say, yes, I'll accept the help, which is so difficult for a lot of people to do because we're so prideful and we don't even know it. And once you say, okay, I'm ready for some help, man, look out, the healing can really change. And that's what we do. We change lives. We change hearts. Our mission is to transform lives through an unwavering commitment and faithfulness to Christ. And once you make that commitment, man, look out, it's fun. Yeah, that's that's awesome. You know, and what I love about that, it's just so in line with what we do at The Warrior's Journey from this perspective. And, you know, I've, I've had the privilege of being at several of these events, these charges that are they are. They're fun to watch, and it's fun to watch the vulnerability uh, kind of fall upon that 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 person's life. The individuals that are actually coming into the in, to engage with these, because you know we're we're like prideful, as you said, or afraid, or which probably is another form of pride, right? Because we allow fear to enter in, or or it's uncomfortable, or and most guys don't want to be vulnerable. I mean, the whole idea of vulnerability is like, come uh, on, I'm a man, right? Yeah, I'm a well, B2 pilot. Yeah. I'm, I can't let you see anything else yeah. but how strong I am. Yeah, because right. it's like you have to let go of the yoke. That's right. Right. You can't be in control. Wow, that's a that's a big ask. But what what's really cool about this is the environment just really allows that to happen. I think organically, naturally gives God's presence and his spirit the ability to to do that in a way that's pretty meaningful and it's been fun to watch. And and uh, you know, we even have some others here in the studio today that have personal testimonies on how that's affected. So, uh, so Mark and Tammy are here and they're watching. And what, what they're, they're part of your team now. So, yes. so, so anyway, I just mentioned that because I think we underestimate the power of community, the power of of mission and, and purpose that's related to why we were created, and and then being able to being able to overcome uh, those crazy tendencies that we all battle and mm. that we've all been. We're all guilty of. I know one of the. I, I don't think I'll give it away because if you haven't been to a charge, but one of the things that you like, you mentioned this because I you did this in your own testimony. Mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. you know, relate some of the the struggles and challenges, the the sin, you know, in our lives. Put it on a piece of paper and nail it to the cross because that's what you know Jesus did that. And so that's one of the activities I remember when I first went. It's like you know, you know, hey, I've been in ministry for years. You know, you know, I've been, oh, yeah, I think this is cool. I'll just I'll kind of watch from afar. So I think, well, no, I'm going to participate. And I'm, so I'm. You got this list, and I'm checking like, well, yeah, that one's that one's yeah, okay, I got I got to I got to confess that one. Yeah, that one too. Okay, that one too. There's like several rows, and I'm like. Oh my word! There's a bunch on here, that <laughs> and so I did that too. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go nail this. And next thing I know, I'm like having this moment with God, and I was like, wait a minute, that wasn't supposed to happen, you know? And it was pretty cool, yeah, you know, yeah, just really, yeah. really neat. So I love the fact that God has given you this vision and this ability to create an environment where men, specifically men, can come to a place that's safe and really find um, a place where they can say, hey, okay, I'm, this is for real. Yes. Pretty powerful. Thanks. I appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. And one of the other things I do uh, for any listeners, if they ever want uh, for any of their events, what I like to do is reenact as a Roman cross builder. You've seen that multiple times mm-hmm. where I'll put a 
big log up on my shoulder, even if it's a little telephone pole, I don't know, bring it. Uh, and then we, <laughs> I'll just chop it up and reenact as, you know, the Roman cross builder for Jesus. And yeah. I do it this at churches where other people, you know, families we can come forward and, you know, do the same thing, nail their stuff up to the cross and leave it there, right? Don't pick it back up. Yeah. So a lot of for the warriors, you know, with identity crisis and the hurts that they have and the pain, uh, step one is to actually say, okay, I just give it up. Step two, three, and four is the follow on. Okay, now I need to do something. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, so amazingly good. Can I just tell this quick little story? I think it was the second time that we were at the second charge and, and uh, you said, hey, I got these really cool. You were getting ready to backstage and, you know, getting ready to go up and do your cross thing. And he said, I got these really cool pieces of wood and they were great. And I looked at those and they, I think they were like some oak post, if I remember right. They were hardwoods. Seasoned walnut. Is that what it was? It was okay. a bad decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause, like, Cause I was like, wait a minute. And you have these big long stakes and you you take this big hammer. Yeah. And I'm like, did you, I said, did you pre-drill those? He goes, no. No, uh, the, the a guy, real man doesn't need yeah. to pre-drill them. So, so as he goes up there, he's hitting these, and he's like, and he's talking, and he and he's hitting, and they're going in maybe like a <laughs> millimeter at a time. Sparks are flying. Yeah. Out. It was so. Ridiculous. I think about the one hundred and fiftieth whack. <laughs> you're looking at me going like, I knew you're thinking. Next time we're gonna pre-drill these. <laughs> it was so awesome. Uh, it was so funny, and you know, I think all the other guys were like. Wow, man, he's really into this. <laughs> he's, he's giving it all because you didn't you didn't miss a beat. You're like it was it was great. It the was show great. must go on, yeah. right? <laughs> I pre drill all the holes now. <laughs> that was awesome. So I, I said, if there's anything that I ever gave good advice to Scar, it was maybe that one time. <laughs> that was pretty funny. So good uh-huh. stuff. So so talk to us about what's what's the future hold because you guys have been so successful in doing these charges and, and, you know, not just here in Missouri, but I know you've, we've, we've seen those happen now, uh, in places like near seven special forces group, you know, Mm -hmm. we, we, uh, you know, we've had these spread out and we have a, we'd like to continue to be a help, you know, to see that vision go forward because we realize that the warrior to warrior in, in our, in our world, you know, and I know that all in goes beyond just the military because it, because your heart is to reach all men. Mm. So, but I'm really, truly thankful how you're helping military men, especially. Um, and so we want to continue to do what we can, but talk about, you know, what's next steps, what's on the horizon for, you know, this year and maybe in the next few years to come. Just got a phone call two days ago. If you didn't know, uh, there's a, gentleman that really wants to get to Guam, get us to Guam. So maybe you can help us do an all immense charge out at Guam. And we're in. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. And I got a phone call a few days prior to that says, let's go down to Houston, Texas. Awesome. Where they have another large uh, veteran as well as active duty Huge. You know, uh, contingent down there. Yeah. Hey, and we'll, we'll so help. We'll help. We go. got some connections. Let's That's great. Go. All right. And so uh, we will go anywhere to, to, to those men's charge. And, uh, we're also facilitating um, here in Missouri. Mm-hmm. And then also we're even doing like one to two day events for churches that are opening it up. And uh, we just want to be able to, for everyone to experience the same freedom that you can at the charge. Also what's happening, uh, I'm super excited is uh, we started writing a book and the book is really focused on, there's no such thing as coincidence. And it's going through uh, various different stories of uh, the life of a B2 pilot, a guy that was, homegrown Missouri, you know, uh, guy who couldn't finish high school without cheating to meeting an Amish guy who gives his life to the Lord and, and all the little intricacies that has to happen in order for that, you know, to come to fruition. And so sounds like you're ready to do that. Sounds like you get a pretty good test subject there. Are you, you're reflecting on some own personal experiences? All of these will be (laughs) one. And the greatest thing in this book, it's going to be 100% uh, true stories and uh, it's just going to knock the socks off of people. I I guarantee it. And it's all going to be just from, uh, from my life experiences since 2016, to be honest. Well, I have to tell you, if you're listening, um, scars kind of filled me in a little bit. I know that uh, Tammy and Mark, uh, who are in studio with us today. They're helping you with the project as well. And uh, you can learn more about that. We're going to give you some information here in just a few moments to learn more about that. Um, I, I'm just so grateful because these are the kinds of things that we need, uh, especially in our military communities, to to bring a greater sense of hope and purpose. And with all these guys transitioning, with you, which you have just recently done, you know, your example has been so awesome. And so I appreciate you know, not only the sacrifices you made as a military guy, but now the fact that 
you're not retiring. You know, this isn't this isn't coast time for you. It, well, I, I got a couple things for your viewers. And uh, so here I am as a commander mm -hmm. leaving the community after almost 23 years. Um, they were, I was climbing the corporate ladder very quickly. And uh, Lord told Mil me... Military speaking. Militarily yeah. yep. speaking. Yep. And uh, the Lord really told me, don't take the vaccine. So they said, well, you either take it or get out. And so my... A good military career was coming to an abrupt stop, and I didn't realize I kind of had an identity crisis. Mm. And I thought I had it all together. And so it took about a year, nine months to a year, just to shed the old identity that I didn't know was so deep-rooted. Mm. And so that is tough. So any, I, I'm telling you as a guy helping folks, those that are just getting out of the military, that transition's hard. Yeah. Whether they'll say it or not. It's hard. When you and say identity, do you scar, talk just a little bit about that. What was that identity? Give you an example. My identity, you keep calling me Scar, right? Mm -hmm. And so everyone knows Scar, Scar. Well, in the military world, you're going to see a guy in uniform. And I am always military. You know, they say so often, you can take the guy out of the military. You can't take the military out of the guy. Mm -hmm. And that's true. But now you have a new life. And that new life has nothing to do with the military. You have to make all these choices on your own. <clears throat> and it sounds funny, but my wife was like, let's go to Scotland. I was like, great. And I'm kind of like, uh, when do we go? The answer is anytime you want. Uh, who, who do we tell? Uh, you don't have to tell anyone. I, I can just make all these decisions on my own, but it, it's a whole lot of decisions. <laughs> Freedom! And what do I do? What am I going to wear? And <laughs> And I have to figure out what the weather's going to be because everyone always tells you what right, it's going right. to be. Like, and just what do I do? And so That's crazy. Just, during that transition, you know, uh, everyone needs help transitioning sure. is what I'm saying. And it's probably different for so. everybody 100%, to some degree. 100%. Yeah. So do, do, you, do you want me not to call you Scar anymore, by the way? Oh, no. That's Are you sure? Okay. <laughs> Because I can say, you know, I can say Stuart if you want, or, or uh, really, technically, it's Tim, right? Yeah, Tim and me, you know, it's, so, yeah. No, yeah. it's good. So I don't have an issue with it. Uh, I'm just letting you know that everyone, whether yeah. they'll say it or not, is going to have something deep inside those invisible yeah. wounds that they don't want to talk about. Yeah. They're still there. They're still real. So keep doing what you're doing. And I appreciate that, too, because we, we want to be able to offer an opportunity for people to actually address it. So, and it's for everybody. Don't, you know, because you say, I want to address it, doesn't mean you have a problem. It's a challenge. We all have challenges, you know, and so why do we why do we make it so hard? It's crazy. I just I thank you because a guy like in your stature being willing to be vulnerable enough to share that uh, is, is, is such a powerful thing. And by the way, vulnerability. Can I just re, I want to restructure the identity of, of vulnerability. Vulnerability is not being gooey, touchy feely. I think that's sometimes what we think when we think of vulnerable. I think of vulnerability of I equate it to Marines on a beach. You know, you get, a, you get a group of guys, you get a squadron that storms a beach, right? Or you get a platoon that's on a beach, and they're taking fire. And you get a guy over here who's pinned down. Maybe two guys are pinned down. And you get guys over here who are, they've, they're undercover, and they're, they're in a good position, and they're, they're engaging the enemy, but they see their, their guys pinned down. So what do they do? The Marines. You know, they're willing to literally give their lives for these guys to make sure that they have what they need so they will come out from undercover and go, help save their brothers. Yeah. They become vulnerable. That's right. And vulnerable in this area, um, you, you can, can't can wait for people to read in the book. I become very vulnerable, and I'm very open as well, uh, sharing my story. Uh, there's some other things I haven't shared yet just for the, for the sake of time. But what I've learned is through that openness and that vulnerability, just like what you said, so be it if some, you know, if, if it's taken my life over his, that's fine. Right. If I can be open and vulnerable and it helps someone else, so be it. Let's go. Yeah. And it's just that service attitude that I think pretty much all military members have. Yep. And so we can continue serving. You mentioned retirement. We never retire, right? right. We just keep going. We keep serving. We keep, uh, uh, what I like to say is be the person, be the man that God has created you to be. Not just yeah. what you've called, but he, if you're that unique and you all of your life and all the things have led up to some things, if he's in control of all of that, he created you specially to, to be special, mm -hmm. well, you'd be that person. And uh, just watch and just let him have control, and it'll be a lot of fun. The only thing I would, I would add to that 
because you said it so eloquently, that's beautiful, would be, and remember that vulnerability is the greatest act of heroism that you could provide for your brother or your sister who's in That's right. That's you right. know, so which is pretty cool. Because when you think of it that way, then it's like, oh, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll be willing to take a bullet, you know, to put my own reputation on the line. You know, I don't care what people think of me because I'm going to be real with others because that's what they need. They need, right. they're, they're taking fire and they need help. And so that's, that's so cool. Yeah. So, okay, so if, if all in, uh, and this is where we come to this point in our, in our talk where, you know, people are, you're listening, you're watching, you're like, hey, I want to learn more about this. How do I get involved? So if someone wants to get involved, what's the best way to connect with All In Ministries to, to learn more about what you do? I appreciate it. Um, commitallin.org. So that's commitallin.org. All together. Yes, commitallin.org. Okay. And the reason and we'll, we'll have, We can put that on the screen, yes. can't we? So yeah, we'll do that. So go to commitallin.org. And uh, the reason it's title is that's, that's where you start, man. You got to commit to go all in. Right. And so uh, go there. There's a, an about page. There's an events page. There's a calendar that has, uh, you know, my schedule up there. Where you, if people want to schedule me for things, the contact list is on there. If you want to uh, uh, donate, you can donate to, to our cause as well. Yeah, because you, you're a 501c nonprofit. So, hey, let's not be afraid. Let's let's be vulnerable here. It takes it takes money <laughs> to, and resources to make this happen. So. So, hey, if you're here and you're listening and say, hey, I'd love to, I'd love to give to this, we'd love for you to know about that, too. You can do that on the website? That's right. Okay, yeah. great. Yep. All right. Um, uh, so, yes, we are a 501c3 Texas nonprofit organization. And uh, recently, we also have a go- Gifts and Go slash Mission something? Mission Ready. That's mission right. Ready. Gifts and Go, Mission Ready. Love it. Go out there. And uh, there's actually a pretty good story. It's it may be seem like a long read, but I'm telling you, it's worth it. You'll want to go read it and check it out. Uh, you can give there as well. Okay, that's that's yeah. fantastic, and we appreciate that too. Yeah, we've got we got some cool things brewing. We definitely want to have you back because we want to keep you want to keep things going. And I realize you're not always in the Springfield area where our headquarters is here in our studio, uh, so we might even have to pipe you in via digital. That's fine, whatever it takes. But we'll make sure we want to stay in touch with you and. And uh, man, Scar, we're just really grateful. One, I always like to end our, our podcast this way. So, you know, with the many, many listeners and those who are watching, you know, um, sometimes there there is just that one moment, you know, that one person that just needs to hear something. And so I'd like to give you an opportunity. And you haven't had a chance. We didn't talk about this. Didn't prepare. No, no worries. It's, Thanks you know, a lot. Yeah, no, 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 no you have to get nervous because <laughs> this will just come from your heart, I know, today. But, you know, knowing that you might be able to talk, and you are, you're talking directly to, it could be, that warrior, wherever they are, what's the, what's the one thing out of all that we've talked about, what's the one big takeaway you hope they walk away with today? What would be your message to them? Um, my message would be, you must go all in for Christ. And once you do that, the rest of the hard stuff will fall into place. And what I mean by that is you, once you commit to go all in, then you're going to realize I need help. And help is just going to show up, whether you want it or not. And it's probably going to look a little bit different. He might send you to Warrior's Journey, and you don't want to go there, right? <laughs> or he might send you an all-in. And just like him, I don't want to go to an all-in place. And then lives are radically changed. But once you make that commitment, yeah. make that commitment to him, your life will completely change. And uh, there's so much other things I was going to say about you know depression, anxiety, and all those other things. But there is a foundation that if that foundation is broken and it's not there— man, your life is just going to continue to crumble. So get that foundation fixed. That's so cool. I think the one thing we could both agree on is that Jesus really is that silver bullet. Yeah, He does He does fix everything. Yes. Yeah. Yep. It's different for everybody, but it's pretty cool, isn't it, when we, when we do that. And what I love about everything that you stand for, you even said it today, and it's fun. It's great. <laughs> it's fun. It's not. It's not this depressing kind of oh, always me kind of thing. Or I'm I'm losing my life. It's like no, you gain it in such abundance. So I love that, and you embody that in such a great way. Right. So so thanks, man. We appreciate you, Scar, and thanks for being with us. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks for what you guys do here at Warriors yeah. Journey. You guys are doing you know fantastic work. Uh, keep it up, and whatever we can do to. Get your name out there. Uh, I'm all in for you too, brother. Oh, that's great. Oh, so one more time, website for all in? 
commitallin.org. Commitallin.org. Check it out. And uh, thank you so much for listening. And we really appreciate you taking time to be a part of what we're doing here at the Warriors Journey. And of course, you know, you can contact us at any time, uh, twj.org, uh, twj.org. You know, give us a call or, or, or look us up online. Uh, hit the Let's Talk button and we'll make sure that we will be willing to connect with you. Thanks so much for joining us. And until next time, uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to the Warrior's Journey podcast. Be sure to leave a review and to ask questions, give or get involved, visit thewarriorsjourney.org today. The Warrior's Journey, helping warriors and their families discover and grow in their journey of faith.